Greetings, everybody. It is the Ash Heritor, and welcome back to Rogue Trader. I hope you're all doing well on this fine summer. Are we in summer yet? Can summer be over yet? I don't know. I'm pretty done with it. But uh, anyways, uh, here we are. Yeah, I, I agree. Argenta, I agree. Uh, here we are in Komora, where it, at the very least, is not summer. So, you know, say what you will about Komora. It might be a bad place in a lot of ways, but it's probably not excessively hot. I or always have there. a backup plan. So, uh, what are we going to do today? Honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea where this arc is taking us <laughs> and what we're going to be doing. So, I'm just going to look around until something happens. Uh, so, yeah, we have some Drukari here. Uh, there's a switch we can activate. We should definitely press that button. Always press random buttons that you find. It's going to lower this thing. And we are, of course, going to get this obnoxious interaction again and again. We got some Drukari here. I always keep my Funny how they just open. let us go about our business. I guess they already have people to torture over there. There's our raider. The razor sharp keel of the flying craft glints fearsomely in the dim light. These are such cool looking vehicles. Like, I, I have, uh, I think three of them on my shelf right now. Along with a, uh, a ravager and, uh, a trio of venoms. Once again, I, uh,. I have a Drukari army myself. So, 30% chance to unlock that doesn't seem like it's very good. Examine the area. Lore a Xenos. Trivial task. The ease at which the flyer took to the air suggests that their body must be extremely light. Even small projectiles must pose a grave danger to them in midair. Okay, so that's the uh, the scourge that we saw. The Always winged Drukari that the was there and then took off and we approached. So, that's to the Anatomical Opera. We could try and go in there. I honestly don't know. Uh, we can activate this switch. Again, I don't think I want to do that with only a 30% chance, because I don't know what any of this is going to do. Or we go through here, which will lead to... I really don't know where this is going to lead to. Well, you know what they say about random portals in suspicious areas. Oh, okay, we're coming back to here. Uh, I guess we'll give this area a quick uh, look through. Why the hell not? See if there's any Keep your wits about interactions, you. aside from having a terrible headache. A hideous pile of corpses is giving off an insufferable stench, as hideous piles of corpses frequently do. Alright. What a lovely place. So I think this is just going to lead us back to our lair. This is indeed where we just came from. Right? Yeah, alright. So this just loops around. From the looks of it. That's portal to the anatomical opera, and then the lift to the mangled sector. You know what? Let's let's head down to the mangled sector. Uh, we haven't been there in a while, and uh, you know, I'm starting to miss it. It was just a really nice place. So my apologies if this uh you know these episodes are gonna be a bit more meandering and uncertain because that's just how I feel and normally I would say that's kind of mediocre game design but at the same time I feel like that's what they're going for in this place and it kind of makes sense from a thematic and narrative standpoint of like you're lost and confused in this unfamiliar unforgiving location <laughs> so it, it kind of works we're going to have a look around. This was indeed where the Commissar was uh, skulking about before. The Mangled Sector, which is just, you know, it's a lovely place. We can at least find some more goods here. Not that we can sell them. At least, not yet. There's actually a lot of goods here, so... Good thing we came back here and stock up on some uh, things for once we finally get our ship back. Which I'm assuming will happen. <laughs> this crate is filled with makeshift Lasgun batteries and crudely made auto gun ammo. Dawdle. And then here's the uh, the Aquila, right? Yeah, the makeshift Aquila. But there's more goods here. Hopefully we can find, like, some proper weapons. Something good. Okay, we can demolish this. <laughs> I need a Melta Charge. Okay. Well, maybe we can find a Melta Charge around here. It will hunt again soon. It will come and kill. It always comes. What it? The low vibration that permeates this space is the death throes of atoms becoming nothing. Oh, Fucking joy. This place is pretty cool. Huh. 
The Xenos' ornate clothes and solid-looking armor are caked in his boiled insides. Hmm. I think we uh, discovered that before. So we need a uh, I always have a backup a Melta plan. charge to blow that up over there too. We just got some random beggars here. I've cut my eyelids off to keep my eyes vigilant. Danger is everywhere. Uh, you know, I can I can appreciate the commitment to safety, personal safety. I don't know if I would go that far, but. Whoever tried to settle in this vile place, their fortitude did not carry them far. Are they dead? They look dead. What, what's this guy doing? Oh, he's also cut off his eyelids. All right, so I it seems to be a uh, open. little bit of an epidemic of uh, self-inflicted eyelid removal. Make experience. Nothing matters more. Some more goods over here. Lovely. Truly delightful. Oh, Jesus. Um, this warrants a save. I know what that is. Just gonna save down here. There's a Kronos parasite. A horrific work of the homunculus covens. They extract mines, I believe. And imprison them. I, I'm not exactly uh, like I, I. I know vaguely what it does from the tabletop game. I did not have one myself in my Drukari army. I had actually no homunculus coven units in my Drukari army. I was a purely cabalite force. No, no witches. Or I had a squad of witches and then uh, like reavers, which I guess are part of the witch cults. But uh, that was a I almost entirely like cabalite army. Presence out of existence. Oh jeez! Wow. Uh, he's not looking too good anymore. Argento, you want to get a, uh, a pulse on that one? See if he's going to be okay? Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. Jesus, <laughs> bits. Alright, Abelard, uh, would you mind face tanking that thing? I understand if you say no. Really, I do. Uh, let's see, where can Earliet get some cover that is going to keep her at a distance? I, I don't know, I'm not confident, but... Fuck it, she's going to go here. Start the battle! Uh, I am going to give Abelard all of the buffs that we can possibly give him. Because this is about to get real rough. So let's drop a front line right make here. It happen. Okay. I will drop a back line or a rear back here Ooh, for uh, Irliet. And then we'll get a back line right here with uh, Argenta. I'm actually going to throw it right here because then I can move back. And take a position there, too, once we have everything else in order. I still have, uh, four action points left, so what else could we drop here? I could drop a Prescience, maybe on, uh, on Irliant? Or I could try and light it up. It's actually gonna do respectable damage. So I tell you what, I'm gonna it's light it the stop. fuck up. Alright. And then with my... I still have a bunch of actions I'll left, make it happen. but let's, let's give Abelard a turn so that Abelard can get in there. Because so this thing's going to go next, and I would prefer it to be on entirely it. focused on Abelard, where Abelard can get terrain. What do you mean he can't charge? Okay, so he just can't move. Uh, well, that is most problematic. Because I definitely wanted him to move. Oh, he can't charge because he doesn't have a melee weapon drawn. Oh, of course. And he still can't charge, because he's... we don't have uh, a good angle. Shit. Okay. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, boy. And then I tell you what, this was a bit of a waste. However, there's still things we can do. We can ensure that... We can't scream through this, but we could shoot through it. Alright. Can I still shoot through it with, uh, with this gun? I sure can. Well, I can at least get its attention. It'll take both of its action points, or both of uh, Abelard's action points. Hey, and you know, 21 damage is 21 damage. I and drop a brace for impact, because this thing's going to be on us in a sec. I just hope it goes for him, and not for uh, Cyrene. Because Cyrene ain't going to be able to do very much against that thing. I'm going to drop a prescience on Irliet. Who, if not me? Buffing up her uh, intelligence and perception are both going to be good. Uh, I'm sorry that there's no music here. I don't know why there isn't. Uh, okay, devitalization. Yikes. Just a minor setback. You should have fought better. 
Oh my god. <laughs> we are fucked. <laughs> we are so fucked. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he didn't stand a chance. Oh boy. Alright. Uh, it's gonna kind of be down to, to us to take this thing down in one turn then. Which I don't really relish my chances to be fair. So, uh, what are my angles on this thing now? I do have a bolt gun. I could shoot there. We have a 0% chance of hitting it, which is not the best odds I've seen in my entire life. Guided but if we were to face. run here, for example, we would have a 15% chance of hitting it because of, uh, Sirene in the way. Shit. Alright, I'm gonna run here. I'm gonna run here. I'm gonna God run even Emperor closer. We're going in close. Me. Be the fire in my heart. Okay. Um, I could even move closer. Then we can get a uh, furious recital. And I'm basically just going to unload it on this thing at point blank range. Uh, first, we're going to drop weak. a confident approach. So I'll be getting some extra damage, I think, from the, uh, the range bracket that we're in. And then it's just going to do fucking nothing. Oh my god. Phew, man. Well, we'll be able to at least get away from it. Faith without de <laughs> Damn, that was not as effective as I would have liked. Well, I'll do it. it was always wildfire. So, uh, we'll get some work done. For you, my emperor. It's still not looking good. As the emperor commands, I act. Okay, so then I retreat as far as I possibly can. <laughs> I think we retreat all the way into this corner here. I'm going to retreat all the way into this corner here and hope that fury. something else is going I'll to, uh, or that it's going to attack Cyrene. <laughs> but Cyrene's the least useful one right now, I think. I, I honestly don't know. All right, then we can dash is even farther weak. away. And that... I, I can throw a grenade. I should have done that. Actually, I, I can still do it. All right, so I could toss a, this uh, this gas grenade... Gonna potentially create a toxic zone, Faith which I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna do it. Is worthless. There we go, one whole damage. Alright, early at. It's basically, I think this is more or less, this fight's gonna be down to you. So, you're in cover. Do you have line of sight? Quickly give that a look. We do, and we can shoot it, so that's great. Perfect spot. Uh, aim for the opening. It's got an opening. Great, we don't need to do that. Poise to strike. Absolutely. I am not your Xenos pet. Stack monkey. all of the buffs. This Elusive TV shadow. Is beneath me. Uh, drop some analysis on it. <sighs> if I must. Two action points left. I gotta shoot. So, aim for the opening. I can't hit it. Any particular reason why I can't hit it? I can hit it with this. Oh, because aim for the opening is not the attack. All right, here we go. Uh, killing edge. That's the one. I understand your intent. Please. Favors okay. the swift. You know what? I'll take it. You're. I'm still standing. Oh my god. Just bear. You cannot change this path. It's just deleting us one per turn. Uh, okay, I got an action point left, so. I'm gonna in my sights that fucking thing, so that at least when she gets another turn... Alright, what's it doing? It's coming this way to go for Argenta. I... She's still alive, and then it's gonna do its second attack. You blinded by your own misery. We can't damage it. Okay. Is hidden from my sight. I think I can do this, or more pertinently, I think Iliad can do this. Sincerely fucking hope. I am not your Xenos Aim for the opening. Monkey. Poise to strike. If it serves your cause. This is bad. <laughs> this is real bad. We got one shot at this. What's its, uh... I'm gonna look at what its armor value is right now. What does devitalization do? Okay, so it heals. Yeah, well, the target suffers a permanent minus 50% penalty. If they're targeted by this ability for the second time, they die. No, like, you know, if they're hit a second time or if they fail a save, it's just, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> this thing is fucked. 
All right. Okay. So dodge is seventy percent. That's fine. Its armor is forty percent. All right. So we've we've docked some of its armor already. So that's good. Analyze enemies. I think she can if kill it. So how many stacks does it currently have? It's got three on it. I'm gonna sorry. Looking at it again. So its armor value is forty. We have uh, a couple of debuffs on it. It's in the front line, so it's actually going to take 15% um, more damage. That's pretty good. Okay, minus 10% armor, and then the exploits are going to increase by her perception bonus damage. Or we do an exposed weakness, though that's going to cost her an action point. I don't know if it's going to fucking matter, to be fair. No, I'm going to uh, elusive shadow this. Your intent. And then I'm going to... I'm gonna shoot it with Killing Edge and pray if Kayla Mecha came. Course, oh my god. <laughs> okay, the biomechanical creature is flailing its limbs faintly. Its body is broken and bears the sign of combat, but it seems no one is planning to repair it. You can see the glistening flesh under the cracked carapace and the bunches of wires that permeate it. The armor plates rise heavily and the creature emits a wistful, creaking sigh full of regret. Do we examine this fucking... Yeah, yeah, let's talk to it. Can you understand me? The creature emits a series of wheezing sounds. Was it an answer? Moans of agony? Or just the normal rumbling of its mechanisms? There is no way to tell. So this thing is like pseudo-organic. This was once a person, or potentially multiple people, all fused together. There's like vestiges of their consciousness are still active and in horrendous agony inside this thing. Um, what are you? The creature responds with a series of choking and snarling sounds. After a moment, as if realizing that its language is not clear to you, it extends a fighting limb in your direction in a menacing gesture. The message is clear. I am a warrior. I am a killer. This is an engine of pain, Elantak. An executioner created by the depravity of my twisted cousins, living flesh fused to a mechanism whose sole purpose is to inflict as much pain as it can. Iliad's face is contorted with bitterness and disgust. The Dark Ones are caught in a cycle of torment, desperately seeking pleasure in the suffering of others. This machine is but an instrument of their endless desire, a symbol of what they are willing to do to slake the thirst and fear that consume them. Let's end the usual exchange and finish the creature off. Dead it is! And we have received... Is this a fucking splinter cannon? Oh my god. I don't know where we would be able to find one of these in this game. Oh, this... I just like every time... We discover new things. Like new weapons and everything. I, the, the profound urge to just like... Start up a new playthrough to run in the background... Uh, you're not going to cargo. Absolutely not. Uh, you, though. I'm going to hold on to this. I, I don't know. I feel like this might be useful. The uh, This should be Kronos, not Kthonos or Ktonos. Uh, is it? Actually, maybe it is Ktonos. Maybe I was just auto-correcting it Kronos for the last 15 years in my head. It's possible. I've, my brain is known to do such things. Uh, the Kronos is a Xeno mechanism that devoured its victim's suffering and converted it into energy. I mean, you never know when you need a battery, right? Like, you know, what if fucking Cyrene's Sonicare toothbrush runs out of battery? What's she gonna do then? He's gotta brush her teeth. Alright, in Thrall Marauder, I don't think he's looking too good. What did he have? He had some uh, heavy leather armor, which we do not need, so that's going to there. And there's some goods here, which we can lure Xenos to open. Which Iliad can theoretically do. Always keep your Unfortunately, we've gotta demolish our way to get there, so... It is, so it is saying Ktonos here, so I'm assuming that I'm actually Compared wrong. Compared to naval service, that was barely a challenge. So, that was horrible. Uh, <laughs> Early at basically soloed that encounter. Well, I guess we can head back to the streets of the chasm. Nice of the lift to come down. What a nice lift it is. You know, if I have a lift in my house, I'm going to make it look like that. And was there anything else here? Just the loot up here that we can't get access to, so... I guess we go back to the streets of the chasm. 
But so that was cool. I wonder, like, if that was just an encounter that happened because we went back on a different time, or would we have been able to encounter that later and maybe had an easier fight if we had more of the party present? I feel pretty good about taking it out with just the four of us. Or, realistically, with just one. <laughs> the other three people were just one turn uh, delaying actions. The thing is fucking horrendous. So if it uses devitalization on the same person twice, they're just dead. So that's something to keep in mind for later. Can't have one person tank it. Can have one person tank one attack and then pull out. So this is now goods here again. Interesting. I feel like the goods are, are the money replenishing. Okay, so that's going to bring us to the anatomical opera. But, because I've been told to uh, really make sure we backtrack a lot, and always kind of look and see where we are, what we're doing. Make sure we're not missing anyone or anything. Because people can just show up and then be, like, gone. If you don't happen to catch them. I'm going to just walk through this area again. And then, I guess... Oh, hello. Examine the fragments. I have failed my kin. Oh, okay. Well, she's failed her kin, apparently. Keep your wits about you. Okay. More goods, indeed. But that's not a high chance of success here. Okay. Uh, so. I have no idea what these switches are going to do, but they might open up different areas. This is going to bring us to the arena. I think we should go to the anatomical opera first. Oh, hello. We can't get to it without activating this switch. Presumably. Right? Yeah. Damn it. Not trying that with the low tech use that we have, I so we need to either plan. get, uh, we need to either find Jai, who I don't think would be here, or we need to find Pascal, who I also don't think is here. So this is a bit of a bummer, considering neither of us have, uh, suitable tech use, or no one in our party has suitable tech use. And we can't respec, so, alright, well that's gonna bring us to the anatomical opera, there's a rack standing guard. I, actually, I think we couldn't get in. Oh, right, right. Meet. The master ordered that you be let through. When you approach, a few augmetics spring to life inside the monster's bulk. An injector hisses, filling its blood with compounds that cause its veins to bulge and its muscles to swell and twitch spasmodically. What kind of creature are you? Uh, it's not. Oh, what a lovely door. I didn't even see that. Like, you couldn't just have a, a mechanism... Oh, it's an Akathist. Okay, that's that's worse. Uh, the monster snorts and puffs out its massive chest. I am an Akathist. Servant of Master Tervi or Tervantias, his meat driver. What is an Akathist? An augmented warrior is called a Rack, because the homunculus invades his nature like a conqueror. Wrecks his mundanity and creates perfection from whatever is left. An Akathist is a superior among the Rax as well as the strongest and the most frightening. AKA, they're the unit commanders for uh, squads of Rax in the tabletops. They can get some pretty uh, gnarly weapons like the hex rifles and all that. What offense has earned you this hideous transformation? No offenses. Labors. I toiled to be granted this honor. I begged for it, and I received it. Perhaps it is the only way to survive in a frightening place like this, but you have my sympathy nevertheless. It is the weak who need sympathy. I am not weak! The roar is magnified by the echo inside the helm and hurts your ears. Smile. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. The monster huffs strenuously. It seems to be perplexed by the sophisticated nature of your social gambit. So, yeah, like, some of them were human, some were something else. I think most of the, like, racks and everything were originally human, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, Robert, feel free to correct me on anything that I get wrong. 
You know how it goes. Uh, the sullen hiss of a pump built into the Hulk's body is your only reply. Okay. Well, uh, into the anatomical opera we go. We've been let through by the Akathist. You know what I would really, really love? Like a, like a roguelike arena mode from this game, where you get to just pick, like, soldiers from several of the factions and assemble, like, a squad and assemble their gear and go through some, like, roguelike thing, you know, to unlock new stuff. That'd be really cool. Like, actually play with a rack. Oh, down we go. Coughing up, uh, something. Who knows what. Mm, I don't think we're doing too good. And where are my buddies? The lamps emit rays that pound your pupils, burning and biting them like angry snakes made of light. Fun. Voxmaster Vigdis. Oh, shit. She's here. Helmsman Rabber is here as well. Okay, so this doesn't bode well. Through the bars of the gate you are walking on, you see a bottomless abyss. It beckons you to jump in and and promises an embrace softer than any feather bed in the world. Yeah, the embrace of eternity, falling forever. You know, given what you get here, it's probably not that bad. Alright, we fall on again. Generous Dan Rock. Void fear. Okay, I think we're just hallucinating. Oh yeah, they they are indeed just ghosts. No one's actually here. All right, that's good. That means the uh, the Lucis Arrhenius might still be out and about somewhere. The rebellious steps are trying to buck you off and make you lose your footing and break your neck. All right, you little shit. I know you're just a hallucination, but I hate you nevertheless. I don't really like you either, Theodora. Janris, you're all right. Probably. Mort. The thick curtain shoves you away. It's surprisingly strong for a lifeless piece of fabric. Pretty sure this is stitched together human skins. And it's very well possible that they're still alive. So, calling it lifeless and fabric, I think is both wrong. Okay, well, there we have Terviantas. And we have Mort, Theodora's bodyguard. Ah, here he is. Uh... Okay. That is... If I sound funny, it's because I'm leaning real close to look at what I'm seeing. I think it's part of a torso. Get out of the way, skin. Yeah, I think it's part of a torso with some tubes attached and there's legs with like a nub instead of a foot. I don't even know what bone that's supposed to be. There's torsos up here, so I don't know what this is. Maybe like a liver. It's attached to this machinery and that's an arm, but it looks like a baby arm or certainly doesn't look like Mort's arm. And who's this? Some woman impaled. We got some more skin here. Let's get a look at Terviantas, the Arc Machinator. Yeah, this is the, uh, the homunculus model. The Games Workshop homunculus model, which I do have one of. I did get one homunculus, even though I don't use the, uh, homunculus, uh, covens or whatever they're called. Uh, truly lovely. Uh, oh, an Edelthrad! Oh, yeah, he's also not looking too good. That looks at least more anatomically human than what's left of Mort. But, alright, let's 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 give him a chat. Corpse hanging from the structure. Oops. Okay, he's got art. Uh, part of his face has been flayed away into some sort of metal side crown thing. Creature in front of you is a patchwork of skins stuffed with darkness, corruption, and sharp objects. Staring at you with its scalpel eyes, it grumpily remarks, Such a disobedient specimen. You're still not dead. An anomaly. Its foul, corrupt thoughts reach out to you, groping at your face. I need help. But I see you will soon become a very obedient specimen. Convulsive spasms, hysterical reactions. Come here. The creature pokes you in the chest, its triangular fingernail easily penetrating your skin. A strange sound throbs at the edge of your awareness, a sound similar to your own scream. Ow. 
A grotesque spider-like figure looms over you. Its limbs wave frantically, chittering and clicking as they rip something apart and then stitch it back together. And you realize its canvas is your flesh. The Xenos' gaze is indifferent, and his low voice echoes through the room. A sample has been extracted. The specimen is alive. Body and mind expect to function within normal parameters, monkey. I'm going to examine the Xenos. There's something fundamentally wrong with the Xenos' silhouette and its twitchy, abrupt movements. And it sets your mind reeling in disgust. Each of its mechanical tool appendages seem designed to be as sickening and horrifying as possible. What happened to me? The control worm in your nervous system detected my proximity. It signaled that it was dying by injecting a lethal dose of hallucinogenic euphoriance into your bloodstream. A resourceful individual. That thing in my head is your pet. The Drakari holds up the pale maggot, the same one you saw in Marajai's hands. As you watch, the tool appendages perform a swift dissection. The maggot's flesh bursts under the scalpel like claw and blossoms into a disgusting, slimy flower. The Xenos' slow manner of speaking creates an unnerving dissonance with the frantic movement of its limbs. Oh, that's very cool. I grew this specimen specifically for you, monkey. During your interrogation, it intoxicated your feeble senses to limit unnecessary resistance. What a curious experiment it was. I usually extract control worms from specimens posthumously. You possess some degree of bodily fortitude. Did you eviscerate, or do you eviscerate everything you lay your hands on? Evisceration is one of my most respected arts. Or one aspect of my most respected art. His scalpel fingers scrape together with a hushed metallic shriek. I'm gonna say nothing. I'm not gonna taunt him. This is ridiculous. And this isn't gonna get me anywhere, so I'm just gonna say nothing. The Xenos thoughtfully clicks his appendage, studded with dozens of needle thing stingers. Oh. Are you Tervantius? You are absolutely correct, specimen. I am Tervantius, the arch machinator, homunculus, and conductor of this place that staggers the imagination and soul. My anatomical op. <laughs> no point in. So, well, what do I owe you now? You will serve me. Such is life in the spines. The Arabenian urged me to pay attention to your allegedly extremely gifted self-specimen. Let us see if you make a good tool. Who's the Arabenian? Same as you, little moth. The Xenos points a mangled limb towards Irliet. Unless, of course, the darkness of Gamora burns you as fast as the others. What does this mean, Homunculus? Who knows, Asuriani? Who knows? What exactly did this Arabenian tell you about me? Xenos lets out a strange sound that almost resembles a scoff. This information should not burden your undeveloped mind. The Arabenian told me enough to give you the chance to enter my anatomical opera. That is all you need to know. I am assuming it's Nocturne of Oblivion that he's referring to. You, a Drukhari, would do business with a human. I were remarkably open-minded. Do business? The homunculus looks puzzled. I will do no business with you. I will use you. You survived in the arena, which means you have uncommon parameters for your kind. You are a lesser organism, true. The towering heights of my wisdom make it difficult to distinguish between your inferiority and the inferiority of most of my kin. Then what do you want from me? 
you will return to the arena of the Fate Post. You will kill a few of the witch's fosterlings for me. You might even spill the blood of one of the bloodstained proselytes. The homunculus looks past you as he delivers his imperious speech. They are long overdue a small lesson in humility. They have forgotten their praise. They lack respect. They do not appreciate my work. They fail to recognize my authority. Still staring into the distance, he continues to list his grievances with maniacal thoroughness. <laughs> God. Now, oh, speaking of which, there they are, along with Marzai. There they come. The Monculus makes a snapping sound. Here comes the Abyss and his fosterlings. The leader of the bloodstained proselytes has paid a visit to the anatomical opera. Take this opportunity to study them properly. They won't dare touch you here. What will I get out of this? Or will you coerce me as you do everyone else? Coercion will be more than enough. If you disobey, I will turn you into material for my creations and ensure that you feel and are aware of every manipulation performed on your flesh. But if you do what I tell you to do, I will let you live for a while longer. Cooperation will increase your odds of survival. As long as you continue to be of use, I will maintain your organic parts and perhaps even let you play with some of my less significant samples. I'm afraid you do not realize with whom you are dealing. I'm not a contract killer, I employ contract killers. A sharp claw touches your chin, pierces your skin, finds an imperceptibly thin nerve, and your body convulses in pain. This response is unacceptable. Focus, monkey or I will make you either into a rack or a divan on which I host orgies. You will be far more useful in either of these forms. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, a divan is like a, a bed. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Ay ay ay. Uh, okay. An inaudible yet deafening sound invades your mind. Your eardrums are ready to burst. The only sound you can hear is the Xenos' limbs chittering in his ice-cold voice. Abandon the illusion of choice. You will do my will, and if you stop resisting and start behaving like a good specimen, you may eventually receive my help in escaping Kamor. Okay. You hear a shout and the sounds of someone moving behind you, but Pomunculus points his claws directly at your eyes and all goes quiet. The monster turns his gaze on your companions. Intervening would be inadvisable, servants. This specimen and I are having a conversation. I'm gonna silently endure the excruciating pain. Are you trying to be resilient? The Xenos' smile grows wider. Do you wish to put my talents to the test? You have not the slightest understanding of who stands before you. I am the choir master of agony. A second claw, this one tipped with a thin and impossibly sharp needle, pierces your forehead slightly above the bridge of your nose, reaching through bone as easily as through air. For a few moments, the needle wanders inside your brain, causing strange sensations through your body, and then... You feel as if the bones of your skull have begun to contract, crushing your spasm-ridden brain from all sides like an ever-shrinking cage. The world becomes a swimming blur, obscured by a veil of tears, and you hear a strange ringing from somewhere far away. Most likely, your own drawn-out scream. Okay, uh... God, I, I... I don't... think... we can take him. Unless the... like, what are the chances the witches help us? Probably not, right? I will kill. Whomever you want to stop. Good specimen. He pulls his claw out of your flesh, and you notice a heavy drop of blood hanging from it. Very responsive to 
in stimuli. Obedience will be rewarded. Take your crude gear with you. I abhor such technological banality, but a creature as undeveloped as you may find it of use. You hear one of the joints in Taravantes' arm click. Once you are finished with this, go and look at the ones who will be your executioners when the time comes for you to die. Oh, are we actually getting all of our stuff back? Oh, wow. Yeah, I think this is all of our stuff, or at least... Yeah, th this may well be our stuff. Yeah, yeah, look at all these things. Oh my god. Alright, uh... This is pretty clutch. I I'm I'm taking everything we got here, uh, except for the reinforced Catalyte armor, because we already got some of that. Right? Correct. Oh my lord. All right. The, the sheer primitiveness of, the sheer primitiveness of your technologies. Go specimen. Deliver Taravantius's message of blood to the arena witches. The homunculus gestures imperiously at the exit. I would like to speak to you about a member of my retinue who was delivered to you. Which specimen in particular interests you? I want Idira back in my retinue. I want Heinrichs back more, but I've been told I should get Idira back first. Ah, the volunteer specimen. I equipped her with an experimental device to isolate her mind from the veil. The specimens perform menial tasks around the laboratory and serves as a willing source of essences. She is allowed to choose her own torment be it fracturing her bones with vibrowaves, placing herself inside a capsule of extreme heat, implanting an electroscarab under her skin, or shutting off the Psy Stifler. Not once has the specimen chosen the last option. I estimate the irreversible collapse of the cardiovascular system will occur in seven or more cycles of consciousness. A curious yet altogether predictable reaction to implanting the side stifler. I will perform a more detailed analysis of the organic damage after the specimen's dissection. I'm looking for Heinrich, my companion. The monkey male with the consistent connection to the veil. Beautiful endurance for pain. His stubbornness produces high-grade essences of torment, positively frothing with agony. Wait until he is expended and you may have whatever is left. Those from my retinue deserve better than to be confined by you. Relinquish them. Tervantes gives you a look of confusion. Why would I, Spitzman? <laughs> I could threaten to kill myself. <laughs> With a full escort, I would have better chances of succeeding and contributing to your plans. Then find yourself other fighters. The chasm has enough prisoners, mercenaries, and gladiators. My specimens are not yours to waste. I'm gonna kneel. I recognize your power over me and beg you for leniency. Caravantius smiles acidly. Very well. I will release one specimen. As for which one it will be, the choice is yours. I'm going to take Idira. I I'd rather take Heinrichs, but... I've been adv advised to save Idira first. I think... Judging by what he said, that may have been a, uh, a kind of a cryptic warning that if I don't save Idira after a certain amount of time, that she's just going to be permanently dead. And as much as she is a liability, I still want to, like, proceed her quest line and learn what there is to learn about her. She's still an interesting character. We're going to take her. And in any case, having another Diviner might not be a bad thing, since we're so gypped with stats. That getting those, you know, making sure we get all the early buffs, and she can use a couple of, uh, you know, offensive abilities as well. I'm gonna take her. Sadistic smile is playing on the homunculus's lips. Yes, I wonder what effect this will have on the rest of the specimens once they learn of your decision. 
Javantias dismissively throws you a tiny object. This is the key to the device worn by the volunteer specimen. The one that suppresses our connection to the veil. I wonder if it's already caused permanent psychological damage. No matter. You will only require the key if the specimen resists. She has always been free to remove the device herself. Alright. I require your aid, homunculus. Tervantius raises an eyebrow. You forget yourself, specimen. Go and serve my will. And should I ever decide to show you favor, I will do so at a time of my choosing. <laughs> There's no deal here. Um, my success benefits you. It is reasonable for you to help me. The Monculus waves you off in irritation. If you are unable to make yourself useful, I would rather wait for you to die and find myself a better tool. You should be worthy of my attention, not a drain on it. Is there anything I can offer to repay a being of such brilliance for the attention he may graciously grant me? Let's try and manipulate him by appealing to his apocalyptically large ego. Cervantius' smile is a strange combination of contempt and pleasure. Your possessions do not interest me. If you had something that could intrigue a master sculptor such as I, perhaps a remarkable piece of organics, then I might grant you a few short moments of my time. If it is a sacrifice you want, artisan of flesh, I am ready to offer myself as one. Iliad's voice vibrates, but she keeps her eyes locked on Teravantius. Will you take my flesh? Oh wow, she's actually offering to sacrifice herself for me. I would not have expected that. Uh, this proves her loyalty beyond any uh, shadow of doubt at this point. It makes me definitely feel good about forgiving her. Uh, and of course, yeah, yeah, I will take more than flesh. I can extract something far more valuable from a single shred of your organics. The homunculus smiles unnervingly. This does interest me. I will not remove much of her. Her functionality will not suffer. Iliad, why? This will be a step upon the path of atoning for the errors of my past, Elantark. If my... Sacrifice will bring us, bring you closer to salvation. I will commit myself into the hands of this tormentor. I'm sorry, but no. We will speak no more of this. Iliad frowns, and you catch a strange look in her eyes. A mixture of sadness, relief, and shame. Aww. Gervantius shrugs, then a spark of curiosity in his eyes fades. Okay. I must take my leave. I don't know. I don't want to know more about his craft. With a weary sigh, the homunculus turns away from you. His knife-like fingers making an unnervingly an unnerving scraping sound. So we have to now go into the arena and uh, kill some I people. I always keep uh, my options open. Idira's here. Where's Heinrichs? He was standing here too, wasn't he? Hopefully, he's not that guy on the table because he's not looking too good. But we can uh, get Idira back. Idira Salas is staring at you as if she has seen a ghost. There's a strange, eerie-looking device on her head. A tangle of myriad thin, translucent threads coiled in an elaborate, sickening patterns, or coiled in elaborate, sickening patterns on her temples. Many of those threads penetrate the skin of her face, neck, and clavicles. Lord Captain, you are alive. Idira, what are you doing here? Uh, actually, I'm going to say this. I am, and it is good to see that you live as well. Oh yes, I live, Idira giggles. I've never felt so alive. Uh, that's not good. The longer you look at Idira, the more strange details you notice about her appearance. The odd, earthy tones of her face, the fine purple veins around her parched, cracked lips, the strange change in the color of her now lusterless eyes. An unpleasant sense of wrongness comes over you, as if the woman standing before you is not quite alive. What have they done to you? They set me free. Idira looks you in the eye and smiles feverishly. Free from the fear. Free from the pain. From them. From the whispers. They cut off our warp connection. When they captured us, I... I don't remember much from back then. I remember the shackles that burned whenever I heard a whisper. I remember injections that made my body go numb. I remember them dragging me away from you. They took an interest in Heinrichs too. 
He almost fought his way out once. The new masters were amused. Idira ducks her head and bites her lip. Then I wound up here at Master Tervantius's mercy. First he studied me, poked me with needles, and opened up my head to get a look at what was inside. But then he made the voices stop. He made them stop. Serene, I don't hear the whispers anymore. How did he make the voices stop? With this, I think, Idira touches one of the tubes on her head. It hurt when he was putting it on. It still hurts, but I'm used to it now. What matters is the damned door to the other side is closed shut. I don't hear the whispers, don't see ghosts of the future, don't get woken up by the tormented screams, and I'm not plagued by visions of the horrors that are waiting for me. All of it just stopped. So, remember, if she keeps that on, she's gonna die. Does that mean you cannot use your powers anymore? I can't, you know, and good thing too, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> I think the Xenos are terrified of human witches. Why else would they keep me half delirious and out of it? Or do all these things... Or do all these things to sever our connection to the warp? They're scared, all right. But they don't know how else to fight it. Yeah, she's got a point there. We can use this. This isn't right, Idira. Whatever he did to you, it's perverted. Perverted? Huh? Like you'd know what it's like to be born a witch. Uh, excuse me. To have your name cursed by all and sundry since childhood. To live as a worthless, dangerous freak who's only used as to become someone's pet. Idira grits her teeth. I know Lady Theodora wasn't like that, and neither are you, but that's not the point. He made me normal, finally. If it means I have to serve a Xeno, so be it. All the days I've spent here, I've spent in blissful silence. No one bothers me. No one torments me. No one is trying to get at me from the other side, and on this side, nobody notices me at all. I don't want anything else. I just want to be left alone. Idira turns away, teetering slightly from the sharp motion. This is pretty cool. Pfft. What are our chances? Okay, actually, Ardenta can do this. Uh, I can do Persuasion. Logic is unlikely, and <laughs> rip it, rip it off. <laughs> I think this is the best a a action here, Medicaid. You look as if you are going to. Uh, you look as if you are about to die. Whatever this thing is doing to you, you will not last long. I don't look so good, do I? Idira looks, uh, licks her parched lips. Her tongue is swollen and pale. I can't really feel my body. Huh. I never thought I'd be in danger of dying of physical causes. I always thought it would be my brain melting away to nothing. This is not living, Idira. It is better to live out the time you have on your own terms than spend an eternity the existing the way you intend to. Idira grimaces. An eternity? An eternity sounds like an awfully long time. Especially here. I hadn't thought about that. Idira struggles to swallow. You think she might be trying to cry, but no tears come out. But if I decide to leave, then Master Taravantius will surely want it back. He'll surely want to remove this thing, and then the whispers will return. They'll start beckoning me again. What then, Cyrene? You once promised me. You promised me we'd think of something, right? And now we know the Xenos have things like this. So that means there's hope. Don't think that's going to convince her. That might. She seems focused on this thing, but yeah, I think this is the best option. Perhaps we can figure out how that thing works, but we will need to remove it first. Idira's eyes light up. You're right. Once we're home, it'll be a cinch to find some Xenotech whiz to make sense of it. <laughs> Probably not. But as long as it gets it off of her for now, I think that's good enough. Alright, that's enough from, of me running my mouth. It's time. She grabs the device on her head with both hands and begins to pull. The color instantly drains from her face, her eyes bulge, and she bites her lips so hard it starts to bleed. With a sharp sound, the tube... The tubes slip out from under her skin, spraying... Blood mixed with some foul-smelling ochre-colored slime, and the device detaches from Idira's head. She lets out a piercing cry, her head jerking back from the pain, and the delicate device clinks as it shatters into tiny fragments. Oops. Well, this is awkward. 
Idira forces a laugh as she looks at the shards on the floor. Looks like the Xenos are right to call us clumsy animals. Oh well. Since it's decided, she shoots you a look of vicious glee. Might as well go out with a bang. Lead on, Lord Captain. <laughs> okay. You know what? I, I like her a bit better now. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's level her up. Uh. Yeah, natural luck. Sounds good. Do it. Just thematically makes sense for her. Okay, here we are. I now have a party of five. I would like to get Heinrichs back. The shoot sends spent materials to the corpse dump. Materials such as you. Aw, oh, thanks, game. Um, what's going on here? You vividly remember lying on this table and watching mechanical pincers tear through your flesh. Ah, always a pleasant memory. Uh, Ulfar! Oh, hi! You're the space wolf. Bars on the cage are sturdy enough to stop a tank or the fury of a post-human. Yeah. Let me talk to him. We sure can. Oh, to see them cut down. Alright, so he's singing. Singing softly under his breath. The man of enormous proportions is intently stripping raw meat from a bone with his teeth. His unwashed red hair is falling into his face. His beard is matted and bloodstained, and the aforementioned teeth look more like fangs than any human equivalent. Yeah, the, uh, the Vulka Fenrica, the, uh, the Sons of Fenris, aka the Space Wolves, uh, they have some interesting, uh, genetic anomalies within their gene seed, including, uh, taking in an awfully wolfy-like appearance in some ways. But some more than others! A less knowledgeable person might not recognize this giant humanoid, but you are well aware that this is a space marine, an angel of the Emperor. Yeah. His body is covered in primitive scar tattoos, the meaning of which elude you. you kneel before him. Hail, angel of the Emperor. A red brow quirks upwards slightly, in approval it seems, without breaking off from his meal. He nods at you. For an ordinary human, such a show of regard is a high honor. <laughs> Yeah. What do you want? Okay. Uh, please study. The huge body with straggly overgrown red hair perfectly suits the deep chilling voice of this man, or of this beast in the guise of a man. Tribal scarlet tattoos cover his chest, arms, and back, and you glimpse an intricate and you glimpse intricate braids in his massive, unwashed hair. His body bears n so many pale scars that you cannot count them all, and muscles bulge beneath his skin like boulders. He looks like a statue carved from stone. Yep. It is clear that captivity has sapped this prisoner of none of his physical power. Your assessment is confirmed when you spot the remains of a Drukari in the pile of carrion at his feet, likely one of the homunculus's servants. The Drukari's flesh appears to be making a fine snack for your new acquaintance. Yeah, space marines can just eat people. Like, I mean, people can eat people too, but uh, some chapters do. And, I mean, there's the argument of, are Drukhari really people? I would go so far as to say no. Uh, other Eldari, sure. Drukhari, nah. They, they've traded in any peopleness a long time ago. Anyways, uh, who are you? I am a wolf. Yep. First glance, the man does not strike you as possessing great intellect. He is clearly more accustomed to mauling and killing than thinking. But you detect a certain shrewdness in his eyes. After looking you over, he says shortly, yeah. How did you come to be here? My pack answered the Inquisition's call and came to the Coronis Expanse. There was a battle. And then... <sighs> Fell into a trap from uh, Achilles. We are indeed... Assuming that Achilles Scalander was a traitor. At this point, I'm... I think I'm with Iliad on this one. She may be wrong. I don't think she's lying to me. Uh, but she may have just been wrong. About that, but... Mm, too many things kind of add up. The young wolves yearning to be meat for their brotherlings. To a feast of bolters they went out roving. <laughs> 
Though they were but few, one long fang with them went loping. Not to see them cut down by scythes and clean. The pups he sent scattering, and there stood alone the paths guarding. For a foe he long spied, one worthy among unworthy. The song of swords singing, they clashed with clamor and skill. Until stood the old wolf upon the bones. Then, by the birds of battle, was he brought down. Okay, so a long fang, which are basically some of the old space wolves. Uh, they function as the heavy weapons experts in the uh, Space Wolves Legion, uh, and, or chapter, I guess. There's still sort of a legion. They said, fuck Gilliman's uh, uh, Astartes, the Codex Astartes, basically. Um, so it seems like a Longfang led a group of, uh, I forget what they, I think, Bloodclaws, which are the young ones, of the new Space Wolves, to go out and follow the uh, Inquisition, or to uh, fight some enemies on behest of the Inquisition. And it seems like the Longfang was the only survivor, so I'm assuming maybe that was him. Are you a Longfang? Were you a Longfang? In which case, could you be a heavy weapons expert? That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> oh, was that clear enough? This saga sounds less interesting in prose. I wish to know more about your brothers. That butcher sent you to spy for him, did he? Or do they know nothing of the Emperor's angels, the Space Wolves of Fenris, or the great layman Ross in your corner of the galaxy? No. No, he's not spying on us. Why does the homunculus keep you in a cage? <laughs> for, his for his own safety. When I am not busy killing inhuman spawn in the arena, the Xenos fear my will. I want to help you. offer me help. You stink of Xenos. I see you are on friendly terms with them. You are not sitting in a cage, and you smell of someone else. Someone spiteful and cunning. Hmm. You cannot help me. You must be planning an escape, yes? And why do you want to know? Can I answer that? I can't answer that. That's unfortunate. I have no more questions. Mm. Alright, I'm really eating more of the dead Drakari then. <laughs> Let's listen closely to the song the prisoner is singing to himself. You do not know the language. The sound seems crude and mangled, but not entirely lacking the harsh dignity of a form of gothic, while also sounding similar to the rumble of a landslide, sharp, choppy, guttural phrases tumbling forth in a harsh rhythm. Ooh, we could attempt to join in the singing. That'd be pretty cool. Succeed. You close your eyes and enter the flow of the song. Like slipping into a fast-flowing mountain river, words rise up naturally in your mind. And they are not the same ones sung by the prisoner, but you sense their aptness. Verse flows from your lips, full of surprising poetic metaphors and bloody details of a nameless hero fighting monsters under the light of unfamiliar stars. You are the one who has shot the Lord of the Skjalds, I see. <laughs> <laughs> In the long haul, some of my brothers will be eager to tell you of their exploits so that you would sing a saga of their deeds. <laughs> All right. Well, that earned his respect. Now, we're not going to say this because we're absolutely not going to assume that a space wolf is going to serve us. Let's step away for now. Is we'll there come money back to later. be made? I don't think we're going to be able to get him right now. Um, we got some homunculus's minions here. Let's see what they have to say. Okay. 
The gatekeeper lets anyone into the opera these days. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Let's, uh, I think it's probably also where I'm going to end today's episode. We're going to head back Mistress into the street. Elliot, Whoop. The Damn it, all the hell. I already clicked on it. Hopefully it's going to be in the log and then I can just read it out. I really wish the game wouldn't do those. at certain moments. Perhaps... I, I really wish I... I hope I can see. Yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Mistress Early, the ship's crew would be less alarmed if you made the slightest effort not to frighten them. And unfortunately, that cut off any response she had. But I think I've heard this one before, so... It's nothing, nothing new. Anyways, uh, that's going to be all for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. This was pretty cool. Um, you know, we got Idira back. We met Ulfar. He seems interesting. I predict he's going to be a companion for later. You know, there's been reference to Space Marine characters. And, you know, he's on the cover art of the game, so... I reckon we'll be able to save him. Also, Idira gave us the... Uh, a very cryptic message. It's one of the very first things, first conversations we had of her. She gave us this kind of cryptic uh, forewarning message uh, that involved a lot of the companions, uh, as far as I'm aware. Uh, not all of them, but at least some. But there was the, the red wolf on the chain looking for a new master. And I think that was in reference to Ulfar. That's finally uh, coming true. I guess it would be a prophecy is what we would call that, not a uh, forewarning. But uh, interesting. Very cool how that's all uh, coming together. Anyways, that's going to be all for today. I do hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you have, do drop this video a like. And the next one will be up in a couple of days. Uh, once again, as I mentioned in my Elden Ring series, uh, this month's going to be a bit hectic. So uploads are going to be a bit less frequent for everything. Um, and to those of you who are watching this who also watch my Baldur's Gate and wondering, hey, are you abandoning Baldur's Gate? No, it's just on hiatus until one of these other playthroughs is done. I can functionally do two at a time. Um, and these, you know, this and Elden Ring are, you know, my two current favorite games. I still like Baldur's Gate, so as soon as we're done with one of them, I'm going to, uh, restart the Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough. So, uh, fear not. I'll give a, uh, a recap too when I do that. Anyways, alright. That's gonna be all. Ash Arter out.